Hey guys and girls, whoa, 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 welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. Today we're doing something new, way something new we haven't done before, something that's really core to the whole programming and C++ thing with objects and stuff. And uh, so, so we've done templates and we've done pointer, dynamic arrays and all kinds of stuff, that's great. But this is also a really important part. And this is called inheritance. Alright, so everything that has to do with uh, inheriting from other objects and, 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 you know, having different types of the same type, like, let me give you an example. Like, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a base class, it's called, a base class called person. And a person can be a lot of things, right? A person can be a student, a teacher, a pilot, a, any, any type of class, different type of class of person. And a different race or different, you know, gender or whatever. You can have any types of deviations from the base class person and what you don't want then sometimes is to make a person class and then make a whole new class with the same set of things that all person already has but you have to copy all those things in a new class and then go ahead and make those again and, and call that class like student or something you don't want to do that you want to have a base class called person and then you'll just derive from that person class and just make a new class called student have a few more things and, and because it's derived from person and it, it inherits from person, it's going to have its name and stuff that person already has. So you'll see what I mean a little more, uh, you know, clearly here when we make a, 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 type of, a new type of thing here. Now, what you need to do for this is you need to make a new project. You can't just make a new CPP file because then you'll get a, a lot of errors and stuff. So you make a new project. Let's call it, I'll call it example 60 for my own sake. H examples is good. All right, you make a empty project, console application empty project. You can remove this and then go ahead and finish that up. And we'll make a new CPP file called main. Now it should be the same for you guys in code blocks. Just do the same thing uh, and then add a new class. All right, a new class. Now, if you don't have the wizard, for making a class you have to make a h file with the name and you have to make a c++ file with the same name uh, but I, I showed you that in another video I think but uh, and then pragma once is only for visual studio and what that does it, it keeps the h file from including again and if you're on code blocks what you want to do is you want to do this instead of pragma once you remove it you say if and def if not defined, any type, any name, but a good general, a good thing to do is is saying the class's name uh, in capital. And if if not defined, then define an h, and then you put the end if at the bottom here. All right, this is what you have to do. And then you'll include your libraries be beneath this, underneath that. But uh, but yeah, since I'm using Visual Studio, I'm just going to use Pragma once. You have your person class. You make a private part. Haha. Hehe. -ha. <laughs> there you go. I just did something screwed up. All right. So you have your private and your public. Now, you have your person class, person CPP. What we're going to do, since we're including... Wait, we'll just include iostream in main. We'll go to main, include iostream. We'll do an int main. We'll do a system pause. And we'll do a return zero. All right? So just a regular, but we won't include or use the namespace std here. We'll just include a student, actually student.h now we haven't made that yet but you'll it'll make sense soon in person.h we'll keep all our h files to the right and all our cpp files to the left so in person.h we're going to include string and we're gonna using namespace std because this kind of is going to go into student and student is going to go into main so we're gonna have this chain effect and these things are just gonna follow with that uh, and then we'll make a new class called student 
virtual and we'll say base classes person access public and I'll show you what happens here now to inherit from another class what you have to do is private what you have to do is you have to write it like this you write your regular class just like this student but then you do a colon and then public person now this public doesn't mean that you'll inherit the public parts or private parts or whatever it just means that to the rest of the program this inheritance here what's happening here is visible to everything else if you do protected it's semi-visible if you do private it's not visible to other things now I'm not gonna really go into that too much because it doesn't really matter just use public and you'll be happy alright and a problem here is if you make a string name an int age and when you make a student class every time you make a student class or student object sorry uh, it's gonna inherit the name and the age from the person so think of it as a chain reaction every time you make a student you make a person as well so every time you make a student first a person is created and then that gets added on to student which has for example in student ID so what happens is student is actually both a student object and a person object all rolled up into one but since these are private in person you won't be able to access them directly in student what you'll have to do is you'll have to make accessors here to and if these were protected then I wouldn't have to do that and usually sometimes I do that in games when you have a lot of stuff you don't want to make a lot of getters and setters you just make it protected and then that means that only the inheriting classes will be able to access this but in main you won't be able to call name and age and if you, I guess you guys know if you made these public everyone would be able to access them directly so yeah protected is another m intermediate thing but it will do private because this is what I learned in school but we'll still we'll do this uh, and then what you want to do is you want to do const string uh, get name and then return this name all right and then const there is something called pure virtual classes and uh, I'm not gonna go into that in this video too much but I'll just tell you so you have it in your head pure virtual means that uh, you cannot create an object of the base class you can only create objects uh, of you know the, the classes that inherit from that class the base class so if person was a pure virtual class that means it would just be like a template you couldn't create a person generic person in itself but you could inherit other classes could inherit from it and get all the functions and stuff now how you make a pure virtual function I'm not gonna get into right now but I'll do that in the next video but you can you can do that and this person class is not going to be pure virtual it's just going to be a regular class you can make a person object and you can make a student object so yeah uh, int get age const return this age all right boom so we're good uh, we're gonna make a, another function here later but for now we'll leave that now we have a person class ready person CPP going in here boom now we need to make a constructor string name int age it's gonna copy this into the CPP Oops, sorry CPP is gonna be here H files are gonna be here uh, all right so person there we go this name see everything is just like regular is nothing special like right now happening this age what is special is gonna happen in student so since student in, is inheriting from person remember it every time you create a person you create or sorry every time you create a student you create a person as well and person is created first and the same way every time you destroy a student object the student part of the object is destroyed first and then the person part of the object is destroyed so in a way you're making several objects and melding them into one right so what you do in here is that means you're gonna have to call the person constructor in here and that's what you do in the initial initiation list here so you make person and you do name and you do age 
And that means since student has a name and age, you have to do string name int age and its own little thing here, student ID. Right? And we're going to send these two in here, boom, and that's going to in turn go into person's constructor and initialize all that stuff. So that's how it works. It's kind of a step process. Um, we go into student. Let's do this. And then we, all we have to do is in here, student ID is student ID. Since person, the person constructor takes care of the name and the age you send in. Uh, and there you go. Then you have a student and a person class. Now let's see if all this compiles and works. At least it compiles. That's great. Um, now there is something called a virtual function. Not a pure virtual, but a virtual function. You write virtual, and then you say, for example, string. Get as string could be a virtual function. All right. And you write const after that, because we're going to have a constant function. You do this. You go into your person. And go ahead and do this. Person. Whoops. Boom. And virtual is only stated in the prototype. And what this is virtual does is that you can have a function with the same name in both the inheriting class and the regular class. The thing that's going to happen is that if the inheriting class, if you call it from a student object, you're going to get the student object version. If you call it from here, you're going to get the person object version. And the thing is, of course, student has one more variable. So when we do get a string, we want to get that variable, variable as well. But in person, it doesn't have that. So the person version of get a string is only going to return these two name and the age. Return this. Return name. Um, plus this name. Plus age. Plus two string. This age. All right plus a new line. So it's going to return this string for us. And that's great, right? That's all good and dandy. We're going to copy that. And we're going to student. We're going to make a virtual uh, string. Virtual, make, let's make a const string. Virtual const string reference so we don't okay get as string boom and then make it const as well because it's the same exact function as this it's just that they have the same name but when we define this string const okay so when we define this in student we're just going to add at the end, we're going to add ID plus two string this, whoops, wait, what? No, oh, whoops, uh, student. So we access the student stuff as well. Uh, student ID. Okay. Now, why is this red, right? Because rem remember, like I said, in student, we can't access its own name and age, strangely enough, uh, publicly. So what we're going to have to do is do get name. Since we made the get and set thingies here, or get age and name here. And then we're going to make uh, get age. Just write that in there. So we're going to get the age and everything. I will run this just make sure everything is okay everything's fine uh, and then we have the get a string and get a string okay now in main we have everything included everything is fine uh, we're going to make a person object with the name Bob boon and then the age 22 
Bob is cool like that and then we're gonna make a student called Steve give him age 26 and the student ID is something something okay and then we're gonna run this just make sure it doesn't crash and burn okay now what happens if we do whoops sorry about this uh, p1 s1 what happens if we do p1 dot get a string and just see out that and then we do a c out of s1's get a string now this is the same name of the function but what happens we crash and stuff burns and stuff now um, let me just see get a string oh maybe because we did this let's just let's just keep it like this you know I don't want to screw stuff up too much okay get a string const const let's go in here let's remove this uh, student let's try this out maybe it's not gonna crash now we'll see okay cool now the age is weird the name is weird for some reason this name equals name sorry age always some weird ass errors sorry about that and then boom okay so Bob age 22 name Steve age 26 ID something something so see the same function the same function was used it's just that it can sense which one it is depending on the object and see how the student object had its own kind of name and everything because it, it contains a person in itself and it's extra stuff so yeah it's it's inheriting from person basically and there you go that is inheritance really basic right now just the first steps and then we're gonna see how we can make a container that can keep both the person and the student objects in one of the same container because remember for example the vector can only hold one type at a time string or integer or something but what happens if you have an item class for a game and then you want to keep all those items in the same box and no matter if the item is a weapon an armor a freaking whatever like hp pod or whatever you want to keep them all in the same container and we're going to check that out and that you can do with inheritance stuff like that so uh yeah thanks for watching i hope you learned something I hope you keep watching. I hope you keep learning stuff. Take care and good luck with all the study and stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.